All right. Joe Charbonnet, what about you? Well, the, first of all, the can has been kicked down the road for a very long time, and now it will fall into my lap as your next mayor to deal with this issue. Um, but we need redundancies at Sewage and Water Board. You know, when a pump is, when a um, turbine is down, which creates the power to gener that's generated for the pumps, we have nothing. So we end up borrowing generators after August 5th. We should have our own generators. We should pay for that and have that in every pumping station. We do need to add technology. Uh, the SCADA system, which is used in Jefferson Parish, it allows the director there to log on at any time of day and look on his computer, his or her, and find out which pumps are working or not. And uh, it's an efficient way of using technology. You can turn them on from there, et cetera. So the point is this. We need to bring it to another level. We're using turbines that were used 100 years ago. We have got to start thinking about how we're going to transform from turbines to other types of energy. It is a huge cost, but we have to study it and figure out how we could, you know, what it would cost and how we would pay for it, certainly. Um, when you talk about the um, catch basins, you know, the city council approved a budget to, to uh, clean 3,500 catch basins for 2017. We have some 65, 68,000 catch basins in the city of New Orleans. So that, that's a paltry number in comparison to the fact that we have 65,000 and we know we flood and we know we do not have an effective maintenance program for cleaning the catch basins. So I would start there because that's one of the, the easier things to start with, but certainly incorporating the uh, technology is huge. Where would I get the money? I'm gonna look for new money. You know, I, I don't think a person wants, in this town wants to pay another tax or another fee until they start seeing. So you're against the stormwater fee that. For uh, now I am. I, I just don't think it's gonna work right now. People are going to, uh, be up in arms if we ask them to pay another fee while they're still not happy with the services they're receiving. We've got to give them some proof before we start asking you for more money. And yet, if you don't have the money to make these improvements, you can't make the improvements. But I'm looking at new money, Dennis. I am where, looking at money that's that coming new from money? new developments. You know, we have the World Trade Center development that's coming online. The city's going to get lease payments from that. We're going to get sales tax from there. There's going to be condominiums above the Four Seasons hotels. Though the hotel, there would be separate property parcels of real property above that. What that's going to generate property tax. We have the wonderful opportunity to develop the entire length of our river now since uh, the uh, Public Belt Railroad exchange is in effect. Well, it's not completed yet, but it will be shortly. And so that's opportunity. The, the, the opportunity for development there is endless. So there'll be new money. <laughs> okay. Next question. A recent pavement uh, conditions study found that 44% of New Orleans' 1,500 miles of streets have either failed or on the, ver or on the verge of failing. Two-thirds of city streets are in poor condition or worse. A report by BGR, the nonpartisan Bureau of Governmental Research, of which I am a board member, says the city has identified $1.9 billion in capital funding, including $1.5 billion it's getting from FEMA for damage from Katrina. But the city estimates it would cost at least $5 billion to fix broken streets. That does not include the 30, the 30 million to $35 million a year the city estimates it needs to cover preventive maintenance costs alone. By the way, BGR found that the city spent just under $4 million a year on street maintenance between 2011 and 2016. That's about one-ninth of what the city estimates it needs to properly maintain streets. As mayor, how would you fix the streets and where would you get the funding? Judge Charbonnet. Well, as you said, the money has been um, allocated to the capital projects budget for infrastructure. We need to start getting that on the, on the, um, on the move, so to speak. The money needs to start flowing. The projects need to start going. Again, this goes back to what I said. You guys need to start seeing results around here. You all need to feel like there's a sense of urgency at City Hall to start repairing these streets. It is just not happening fast enough. I don't believe the administration's positions in DPW are capable of handling it. We need to get some program managers in here, some professionals who know how to run these big projects and get this work going. Again, you've got to start giving people results. People are tired of paying this money and not getting results. We have to use that money. Listen, and then when we talk about maintenance and what else we need, once we have proven that we can use the money that the government has given us, then there's a better opportunity to leverage that to ask for more. The president has a big agenda on infrastructure. You know, I have great support in the Congress. I want to use that effectively to benefit the city so that we can ask them for, for more money. But we've got to, we can't have 
$2 billion sitting in an account or allocated to us and we're not using it and then we're gonna go and ask for more and they're gonna say, why aren't you using what we gave you? So let's get started. That creates jobs as well. And uh, future funding for this uh, project to fix these streets? I, I reference going to the government for that. The federal government. All right, Councilwoman Cantrell. Mm -hmm. Well, in regards uh, to the uh, monies that's currently in the capital budget for mm -hmm. streets, absolutely <coughs> the projects need to be advanced. Um, the projects have, go have gone very slowly uh, through even the procurement process and even when uh, the bids have been given, uh, that it's, they have stalled uh, and even uh, they have been redirected and that has stifled growth and activity that we need to get these projects moving. Uh, in addition uh, to that, we still have about that 2.4 billion uh, that we um, can utilize. Uh, my thing is that we have to have the leadership in place uh, to ensure that when we spend this money that are, we're not misspending it. Mm -hmm. uh, Title 44 is very clear. Uh, there will be, if we don't use it properly, there, there will be a de a de uh, duplication of benefits or a de-obligation of those dollars. So we have to have effective management, oversight, and leadership in place, and that is that has to be the top priority and will be for me as mayor. So how do you uh, get these projects going? You, know, what's, you say it's stalled and well, we delayed. have to. No, well, they are. We have to have effective leadership and management within the Department of Public Works uh, that has held these projects up. Um, when you ask the administration even what's the problem, or when you talk to the contractors that received a letter from the administration that says, hey, they're no longer on the job, but yet they had three different streets tied to that contract. Well, that's a problem. And so this is a management issue. This is a leadership issue within city government, <clears throat> excuse me, that has to be dealt with immediately. So you would look for department heads who could handle this better, or this would be the mayor who would handle this better? I mean, oh, what are you saying? Exactly? Well, it would be having people in these positions with the skill sets and core competencies necessary to get projects moving. It's not rocket science. It's happening in other cities. It can happen in the city of New Orleans with effective leadership. I would uh, also move to uh, submit definitely a letter of intent uh, to the Environmental Protection Agency that has seven billion allocated by the federal government uh, for infrastructure improvements. Uh, 2017, the city of New Orleans did not apply, but we definitely will apply and submit our intent in 2018. These are additional dollars that have been allocated at the federal level that we will be able to tap into, and I believe we should do that. In addition to that, you asked about how to pay. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to have to do things differently in our city, and that means retain revenue taxes generated off of the backs of our citizens, hardworking people in New Orleans that gets to Baton Rouge and redirected in other places. How do you retain that? How do you do that? We work with our state delegation. We, cre we create an infrastructure fund here locally, much like we did when we were advocating for offshore royalties post-Katrina with Women of the Storm and me going to Congress with, with, with our women. Um, but we did a referendum statewide that uh, created the Coastal Restoration Fund. That's what was used to get Congress to pass uh, the legislation giving the state of Louisiana more of our, uh, more, well, give us some royalties because we weren't receiving any. So I'm looking at modeling this same uh, way that we did for coastal restoration improvements, but modeling it as it relates to infrastructure improvements. That fund is going to be critical, and it's for improvements as well as maintenance. It has to happen. The lifespan of a street that has been restructured is around two years. And of course, with the sediments and just the environment that we live in, mm -hmm. it makes it an gr even greater priority for us to, one, be able to save ourselves. And we can do that with greater flexibility with the tax dollars that are generated off the backs of our people right now. All right, thank you. New Orleans has had a great success in building a hospitality industry. Uh, it's world class, something we should all be proud of. But our city also needs economic development beyond tourism and hospitality. We need economic development with jobs that pay well. What kinds of business and industry would you try to attract? What's your vision for what New Orleans could become 
and what is your strategy for getting there? Councilwoman Cantrell? Mm -hmm. Well, in regards to the hospitality industry, yes, we are world class as it relates to that, uh, but we, def we have to be world class as it relates to the wages associated and helping our people build wealth. And that can be through incentives uh, to help with home ownership. That can be, of course, with uh, increase in, in wage as well. But we have to play to our strengths as it relates to that. We are a destination city, and um, I've worked in the industry, you know, from you know, front desk to, to laundry to night audit, that sort of thing. So it is a segue into careers. But I would say better quality jobs as well as pay. What I would do is really focus on uh, workforce development, as I touched on earlier. But co connecting the dots with the industries that we know that are here and growing here. So scaling up our bioinnovation, uh, breaking down those silos so that what's created here and, and the startups that are created here and the inventions that are created here can actually uh, build up and be scaled up and manifest themselves here greatly. Um, I would look to aligning training with renewable energy, with stormwater management practices. We just spent a lot of time on infrastructure, sewage and water board. I would focus on advanced manufacturing as well. These industries are here and growing here. Technology, we were the hub for startups, but what we have a problem with is incentivizing their ability to scale up. I would also advance uh, access to capital. Growing our small businesses in our city have to be a priority, and we have many of them. We know that they're the backbone of our economy and of this country, but the problem has always come with access to capital. Of course, again, tying into hospitality, one thing that we look over, are, it's really our creative community, our cultural bears. They're left out, but they're used to then market for the industry, for tourists to come, but we do not reinvest in the people that we market. What's your that strategy for getting capital. this capital that you talked about? That you well, need? what's the, I'm sorry? Your strategy for getting the capital we need to. The strategy is to, one, what I've been working on uh, and pushing on with the uh, city administration is redefining and retooling and unpoliticizing how we incentivize development and growth in our city. We do these one-offs. There are no clear guidelines and criteria that the development community can go and access right now in terms of what that incentive looks like once they want to either take a risk or invest in the city of New Orleans. We have to also streamline processes that you have to go through. Cut that red tape uh, as it may deal with the Architectural Review Committee, it can deal with HDOC, it can deal with the City Planning Commission. Many of these processes actually um, stifle growth, stifle project, you know, projects. So if we're holding them, them up months at a time, that's dollars, that's money. Look at World Trade Center. There are millions of dollars now lost, um, and that's unacceptable. It sends the wrong message when we want to attract business, and we also want to attract investment in our people. New Orleans East, prime for redevelopment, prime. I would expropriate key parcels off of that interstate, use that as an incentive, but then layer it again with the tax uh, incentive and use it again to be that carrot. You have to create carrots, not just in theory. They have to look good, they have to taste good, and they have to be real. And it cannot change in midstream, much like I had to do um, with the um, projects in the warehouse district, for example, with Magnolia um, Market as well, incentivizing development, making sure that we have national retail. These are things that I've done and could definitely scale up in the East, Algiers, and Lower Nine. Thank you, Councilwoman. Judge Charbonnet, uh, what kinds of business and industry would you try to attract? What's your vision for what New Orleans could become and your strategy for getting there? Well, first of all, we have to recognize what hospitality and tourism has done for our community. It does employ some 86,000 people when you add up everyone that works in the business and then the trickle down of you know, the other employer, the other businesses that are benefiting from it. You need florists, uh, you need food suppliers, things of that nature. So it has, it, has, it has kept us going, but we do need to diversify. I'd like to go back and see if we can get some energy oil and gas companies back in this town, partner with those companies to see if we can bring them back and see what incentives they, they would be interested in. Water management is another emerging um, category there, advanced manufacturing, bioinnovation, um, the whole medical corridor, you know, we've developed that very well. We can draw on that as well. 
we're going to have to fund this through new markets tax credits. It is a federal tax credit that affords almost 35% tax credits on these, on these operations. So, but the city's never gone after that. Some businesses have, but it's available to cities for underserved communities. So we need to use those. Uh, the example is if it's a $150 million project, there's about $50 million of tax credits associated with that. So that is an incentive. But let's be real, everybody. For me to bring businesses here, for me to sell this city, which I can do, I'm a great salesperson, I have got to be able to say that you're coming to a city that is clean and that is safe and that the streets are smooth. Businesses are not gonna move here if they believe they're putting their families at risk, if they can't feel safe, they're not coming. We have got to be able to offer a safe place to live. What's your vision? How would you describe your vision for what New Orleans could become? Oh, I think the, the possibilities are endless. New Orleans could become, become a place with finally a nice, strong black middle class after we start training people. Again, it goes back to what I saw at municipal court. People with jobs tend not to commit crimes, so we've got to offer them some opportunities. I see people with better jobs. Beyond talking about minimum wage that a lot of people like to talk about, I want people to have salaried positions, jobs where you have vacation days and sick days, health insurance, so that if you miss a day of work, you, know, you don't have to be docked from your pay. I see people in this town who everybody who wants a job can find one, and there is a job available for them. That's how I see us growing right. economically. Get another question now from uh, social media with Danny Monteverde. Uh, we have another question. Richard Campanella asks, what would you do with uh, the old charity hospital? Let's uh, go first with Judge Shelby. I like the idea that was originally floated of it being City Hall and incorporating the civil courts in that building. That is a beautiful Art Deco building that we should cherish and preserve uh, the uh, opportunity to develop Charity Hospital also offers development in the very um, the, the area right alongside of it. So it does more than just developing, it does more than just renovating, I should say, Charity Hospital. Um, we can ill afford to let that sit and decay. We've gotta do something with it. I think it would be a shining example of improvement, but you know, respect for the past as well. Same question for Councilwoman Cantrell. Uh, the uh, Charity Hospital has uh, been a real focal point uh, within the district that I serve, and I do see it uh, uh, being restored to its grandeur and to the statute <coughs> as it should be. Um, activating it as a civic center uh, where City Hall and other uh, public spaces, uh, whether it's the courts, and, and speaking um, to um, the courts, it would be something that they would be willing to do. Um, I think that activating it in addition to other uses, it's a, th it's a million square feet, and uh, but building in components that will be uh, great for a work environment. Um, of course, um, uh, tying it also to um, social innovation, for example, I was very instrumental of creating uh, Propeller, which is a social uh, incubator, an entrepreneur incubator. And I think that within city government, having spaces built into City Hall um, it could just be just spectacular. Uh, I think, again, reutilizing charity uh, as City Hall, as a civic center, and its current location would just be remarkable uh, for the city of New Orleans. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Okay, we move on now to round four. One final question. Uh, and uh, can you describe for voters a defining moment or influence that may have caused you to make the decisions and choices that led you here to the brink of be becoming the next mayor of New Orleans? We'll start with you, Councilwoman Cantrell. One minute. Um, so one is understanding in this post-Katrina environment that not all of our people have felt connected to the growth and opportunity uh, that we have seen um, since Katrina. Uh, the disconnect in, in neighborhoods who feel left out, and for good reason, like New Orleans East, like Algiers, who really took on the population growth post-Katrina, but yet were cut out of resources to help stabilize and fix streets and bring in even retail, the lower nine as well, uh, people feeling left out, uh, the uh, lack of stability that exists within neighborhoods, uh, the the disconnection, the lack of hope 
and protection and opportunities uh, that our people need. Uh, not only has advanced me uh, to run for mayor, but it's been something that I've been focused on while serving with real distinction in the city of New Orleans, improving the daily quality of life of our people. All right. Chair Charbonnet, a defining moment or influence that may have caused you to make the decisions and choices that led you here? I would say the defining moment is, is encapsulated in the work that I did at court, particularly the diversion programs that I, um, I conducted in my courtroom. I was nationally recognized for my work there. When I saw the difference between offering people the help that they needed to get to the core problems that caused them to be arrested and how it changed people's lives, uh, Department of Justice grant that allowed me to offer these services and connect them to the services, the wraparound services they needed uh, when they were suffering from mental illness and drug addiction, even human trafficking. You know, the changes you can make with one small program told me that I could do much more for my community on a larger scale. Um, when you stop incarcerating nonviolent offenders and you give them the services that they need to get to their issues, the real problems, you save taxpayer money, but you also improve people's lives. And when I saw how I could improve people's lives from the bench, I knew if I stepped down and gave up my job and ran for mayor, I could do it on a much larger scale. So that's, I'm motivated in just improving the lives of the citizens of New Orleans. Thank you both. Finally, it's time for closing statements. You each have one minute for final thoughts. And uh, Judge Charbonnet, we start with you. Well, certainly I want to thank the AARP and WWL for um, sponsoring this uh, forum this evening. I appreciate the time. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are serious issues. This is a very serious election, and our problems are not going to be solved with catch catchphrases and slogans. We need a real leader. I have run public offices for the last 20 years. I've done it efficiently, effectively, and with integrity. I have a vision for this city, for you and me. I have a vision of a clean, beautiful city a city where mothers are comfortable and not scared to walk their babies in strollers in the evening, a city where seniors can sit on their porches in the evening like they used to do and feel safe. I have a vision for a city with a work-class development program like no other. I see this city with lights on at night, pumps working when it rains, and streets finally smooth. It's not going to be easy, but we'll do it together. So I'm asking you for your vote this evening, and thank you so much. Councilwoman. Co Councilwoman Cantrell. Thank you to AARP and of course WWL. Uh, I'm Latoya Cantrell and I hope we can stay focused. This is a critical election. This is our time to break, to really break free um, from the politics that have stifled the growth of our people for generations. I am a proven leader. I have a proven track record of listening, building consensus and delivering results for our people. And I want to continue on that path as the next mayor, as your next mayor. I have been able to ensure that I've advanced the issues as it relates to housing, economic development, of course, managing over and overseeing over five budget cycles while on the New Orleans City Council. I've been in the trenches. I have worked with every single city department. I can hit the ground running. No training wheels needed here. Having the ability to listen and build consensus and deliver is something that I have consistently been able to do for our people in our city. And I will do the same as your next mayor. I want to make you understand, make no mistake about it, I am here running to serve the citizens of New Orleans. As I have demonstrated, I can do. My commitment is there. No training wheels needed. It's very important that we can hit the ground running, but with effective leadership, my leadership is documented in over 153 publications, 26 books, and three case studies written and taught at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. I'm a proven leader with a proven track record of getting things done for our people. I ask you for your support, I ask you for your prayers, and I ask you for your vote. Early voting starts November 3rd, and of course, Election Day is November the 18th. Thank you so much. Councilwoman, Can <laughs> Councilwoman Cantrell, Judge Charbonnet, thank you both. Thank you for being here and for giving voters a chance to learn more about your positions on a variety of issues. Thanks to Xavier University for hosting this forum. Thanks to Danny Monteverdi for tracking online feedback and asking questions from viewers. 
Thanks to the crew who make all of this possible. Thanks to executive producer Dominic Massa for producing this forum. Once again, this debate was sponsored by AARP, the American Association of Retired Persons, and by WWL-TV. We hope this forum has been informative. We encourage you to vote on November 18th. Thank you for watching, and good night.